Okay, let's get started, and we will have two pop presentation on uh, on blab on on plug and development from Zabbix agent, and then Dara Vilkova from Postgres Pro will tell you more about Postgres QL monitoring with Zabbix. So hello everyone. Let me introduce myself. However, yeah, uh, I have already know some of you. My name is Vadim, and I am working at Zabbix in the integration team. And we provide our monitoring system for integrating with different services. Also, we create ready-to-use solutions for popular hardware and software monitoring. Today, we'll tell you about our plugins for Zabbix Agent 2 and will be like a short menu of how to start development for for our platform. But first, tell me who is using Zabbix or who knows Zabbix. Well, that's great, that's great. So I'm not going to tell you more about this. And who knows Go? Not bad. Well, anyway, there is nothing very difficult today. Well, briefly, Zabbix is a distributed monitoring enterprise level with open source. We don't have uh, any closed versions. We develop our product 24-7 and we give it absolutely for free. Zabbix is all-in-one solution. We collect data by different ways. We visualize, we do troubleshooting and you don't have to fine-tune um, your monitoring system. Architecturally, Zabbix has different uh, uh, components, and the one one is uh, Zabbix server, which is the core of the system. We collect data, we store them in the in a database, and then we use them for visualization. And also we do information analysis. We do it to identify problems and to troubleshoot. Another component is Zabbix proxy. It is used to distribute load. In order to collect data, we can use different ways, like with checks, like ping queries, HTTP or SSHA, SNMP, and other protocols, and also by different scripts. But today, we're going to tell about Zabbix agent. It's a service that is run on a visible object that gives you information through the server. If an agent doesn't know how to monitor what you need, it can be scalable. It's a very flexible platform. In order to do so, we can use different um, things. First is scripts or user parameters. They're very easy to develop, but not very efficient in terms of performance and in terms of system resources usage and sometimes they have like an observer effect when you create extra load by just getting statistics. Also they're not very maintainable because they are decentralized. Also we have system run function. It is almost the same scripts but here we send any uh, commands uh, to the agent and we allow executing this uh, it helps us with the centralization, but there are some problems with the security. And the second thing is plugins. Maybe they're a little bit more complicated in terms of development, but they're faster and more efficient. That's why we're going to talk about plugins. So what is the new agent? In Zabbix, there was only one agent written on C. It was fast and stable, very efficient. But it has some drawbacks, of course. But I would rather tell you about key features of the new agent compared to the previous one. This is a brand new platform written on Go, which is a special peculiarity. And also, it allows you to develop your plugins on Go. I think it's an easier task than using C. And I would just call it Go Agent for for easier. It has back compatibility on protocol configuration and metrics levels, and also it has a new architecture that allows you to to use persistent connections, uh, to use stateful connections, to get traps, to configure plugin on the level of a general config file. You can log everything was unavailable before, but not now. Go Agent is available right now 
Uh, it's an experimental feature, and in the next release, in March, it will be as a production feature. Here, I have to mention uh, why we are doing this. One of our goals is to give our users an uh, out-of-the-box solution, completely re ready to use out-of-the-box. Now, sometimes we have to extend uh, Zabbix functionality because it doesn't have uh, monitoring tools for popular uh, systems, and if you would like to monitor something more than just system metrics or hardware metrics, or OS metrics, you have to find a ready solution on in the internet and, ad and then adapt it to your needs. Just like inventing, it is just like inventing a wheel. As a result, we have dozens of external solutions to monitor what you need. So a brand new agent is just a small part of the big project designed to solve this problem. We want to uh, spend our time and give you a high quality solution to monitor your things. Some uh, solutions are being developed by us, some solutions will be developed in uh, collaboration with community and vendors because sometimes they know better what to monitor and how to do it better. The same applies to Postgres Pro. They were one of the first to develop their monitoring solution and this solution will uh, become a part of Zabbix in uh, in the next release. I will give you more about this uh, later on. Okay, now let's talk about plugins and the technical part of the presentation. So, so you could have an understanding how plugin looks like. Just take a look at this um, example. To make Zabbix um, functional, you need to insert your code. And I think that it doesn't look very uh, more, more more complicated than Bash script. And after your first plugin, I think you will um, understand that it's not that difficult. So, in terms of agent plugin, is the is a simple Go package with one or two interfaces implemented that define the logics of its behavior. Currently, there are five interfaces, and first three define the model of data manipulation and there are no strict scenarios of how to use it to make it easier exporter implements pool model by a certain server interval it gives a task to a plugin it goes collects data and once everything is ready it can give it to you watcher interface is implementing push model and uh, the collection model is defined by plugin uh, usually it's just waiting for data and then sends them to to server. Collector is used when you have to collect data on a regular basis and it's, it's up to plugin to define the interval of collection. Okay, let's talk about this in details. Exporter is the most popular and frequently used uh, interface for most of plugins. If you know Zabbix, I can compare it to user parameters. This interface collects data upon request and uh, returns one or several values or just an error. It is using key, uh, key parameter and context. It is the only interface uh, that allows concurrent access to data. Other interfaces are implementing exclusive uh, access and none of other methods can run concurrently until plugin uh, stops working. You have to be careful and to provide right access to distributed data. In order to do so, we have the full array of uh, Go features. Uh, and please do not forget that Go has raised a detector. There is a limit on concurrent queries, uh, 100 queries maximum. This can be reduced if needed by using max capacity method or you can change the same parameter in a config file like you can write plugins, plugin name capacity equals one and this is how you can make an exporter with exclusive data access sometimes it can be useful collector interface is used when you have to collect data periodically collector doesn't uh, 
cannot return data. That's why you have to use it with exporter. A typical case is periodical metric collection uh, until Zabbix server uh, asks for it. Here, you have to design collect and period. Collect is used for CPU and I.O. matrix collection. Next interface is Watcher. It allows you, it enables fully custom monitoring without using uh, embedded scheduler. It can be applied for plugins that are using trapping mechanism and that need a complete control over data collection. You can monitor log files or you can listen to ports. If we have decided to use this interface, you can use Watch Manager embedded package that will make your life easier to monitor subscriptions and uh, events sources. We don't have much time to talk about this in, the, in detail, but I will give you a link so you could do it on your own. We have two more interfaces, which are Rana and Configurator. Rana gives you interface for managing background processes. You can check whether uh, when it started, when it stopped. You can use it to stop background processes and to release unused resources. If we want to configure our plugin, we can do it by using Configurator interface. We can do everything when it comes to config file read or config file passing. Uh, the agent will do it uh, instead of us. This interface has just two methods. Configure method passes global and to private uh, plugin. And validate method that validates a private plugin. If the validation fails, it will not start and we will get information about problems. In the easiest way, we can define the accessible range and default values in conf tags. There is no limitations on how many interfaces you can use. We can mix them as much as we want. For example, system uh, plugin on CPU can use collector, exporter, and runner. Plugins can be external and internal. So internal agents can be found in the internal agent directory. User parameters plugin is implemented like this. The rest, including internal uh, metrics like CPU, drive, memory, are external uh, plugins, and they will have the same capability as ours plugins. They can be found in Go plugins directory. Now let's do some practice, and we will try to write a small plugin. In order to do so, we have first to import a plugin Zabbix package plugin, then we define our own structure into which we put base structure. We will need it later on. Now let's write our business logic. We'll have a simple plugin that will give you weather forecast. In order to do so, we will, we will write a get query every time agent calls for our expert. We will be using exporter interface. Everything we do here, we just make an HTTP query, we get a result, and then we uh, return a, a value. We need to uh, process errors, but just to make it easier, we will avoid it. And then we can register our metrics by using the register metrics method. In order to do so, we, we give a pointer we indicate a name and also we pass over a list of metrics with their description and you can register several metrics by in one step and last but not least we have to enable uh, we have uh, to add our plugin into we have to input our import our plugin in order to compile our agent we just have to 
add enable agent to option and to run make. Once the compilation is over, we can run our plugin and to check it's whether it, whether it works or not. So we give Moscow parameter and then we get a, a, a response. Then after compilation, you can just use go run command just to check whether the card is operational. Everything is very easy. Also, this runtime metrics command that can give you status of all plugins and capacity too. Sometimes it is helpful. But this information should be enough to start, to start experimenting and to start uh, writing your plugins. What comes next? Our next plans are, we are going to develop our agent and, as far as I know, we will implement uh, downloadable dynamic libraries plugins so you don't have to uh, recompile the entire agent from every time. We want to update configuration in runtime and there will be more plugins out of the box from Zabbix team. We will release Docker and MySQL interfaces. If you want to go deeper into this topic, I have collected some uh, helpful list. You can get them by scanning this QR code. I recommend you to take a look at our official guide where we have collected our best practices and recommendations on managing templates. And also you can read official documentation. If you want to get more code samples, the best place is to go to gitzabbix.com with our own directory. You can get standard checks and also there are some code samples in debug catalog. And last is a link to article dedicated to writing watches Zabbix Agent 2. That's it from my side and now I would like to give the floor to Daria Vilkova from Postgres Professional who, who will tell you about PostgreSQL monitoring using Zabbix. Questions can be asked uh, after the session. So good afternoon, my name is Daria Vilko and I work at the Postgres Pro company and I will tell you about the monitoring tools for Postgres based on Zabbix that are used and developed by our company. When we were looking for the reliable monitoring tool, we chose Zabbix because it was open source, scaling, an active community and the popularity in Russia. But standard monitoring tools, it had the number of the constant disadvantages. For example, the access only uh, using the PSQL minus C. That's why we developed uh, a tool that collects metrics from the Postgres and sends that to the agent. And I will tell about it in the first part. So Zabbix keeps on developing, so it offers new tools. And Go Agent that Vadim was telling about is one of the examples. And we were glad to be a part of uh, to develop it uh, as a monitoring module. And I will tell you how did it work in the second part of my talk. So Maman Su is an active monitoring agent. Postgres an operational system, it collects metrics, it forms, creates a large JSON out of those and sends it to Zabbix server. It's written on Python and in Python and it has additional functions like tune command, it changes options in the configuration file of the Postgres for the parameters of the operational system, certain parameters. Report command is uh, gives you a report about the state of the operational system and the Postgres. And there is, I have this scheme here, so to make it real, real clear what's where, Amansu um, is installed to the database server, it collects metrics, it sends to Zabbix server. That needs a pattern, an XML file to process it, the XML file with all the metrics. And after that, the user can use a web interface to see the graph I fix a Zabbix server, the history, and so on and so forth. So Mamansu is uh, older than three years old. We are still supporting it. We are trying to add new metrics into this. And it keeps connected with the base uh, continuously at all times. So it also completes the plugin. And each plugin has uh, 
homogeneous structure that it makes it easy to add new plugins to it uh, or to remove the old ones, so to customize monitoring to your needs. Uh, there is a wide array of metrics and metrics for Postgres Pro Enterprise moments so allows you to configure your monitoring in five easy steps, simple steps, and I will show you how it's done in my next slides. And the cross-platform feature that's important for our clients who use Linux distributive, uh, including uh, domestic ones. And the pattern that was at the previous slide, Momonsu can generate it by itself using its own metrics and to send it to the Zabbix server. The, that's how many plugins we have, and in total we have more than 110 metrics that are available just out of the box. Here are some of them. Uh, you can see the full list at our GitHub page. So that's where all of them are listed. So five steps how to configure the monitoring. We install Momonsu. Here is an example from the source. We have available packages. Then we start a configuration file. We set the configuration there, the host, parameters of connection to the base. You can disable some plugins in there. You can set custom intervals of the matrix collection. Then we export the pattern to template to the Zabbix server. We create a host group that uh, is tied to the template. And then we can start Momonsu. Then we will have the monitoring and the Postgres of your operational system. Our New, our plan is to add new metrics, for example, for PG Bouncer and to expand the capabilities of Momonsu two options. And now more about the module uh, in the new Go agent. So some facts. The connection with the base happens via the library of PGX. It's fast enough. It supports more than 60 types of Postgres. It's also quite popular in the community, and it is used, well, in a lot of places. There is also, uh, there is also a processor that sends the query to the base. That's one of the units of this module, and from the interfaces that Vadim talked about, only two are used. So the exporter is asking for the stuff that processes the queries, and then it looks if uh, the queries were processed in the right way, and their parameters are now typed in in the configuration file of the agent, where the Zabbix server parameters, debug level, port, and so on and so forth were introduced. And in some metrics we are getting by groups, like JSON, to reduce the workload. Now we also have the constant connection to the base. You can set the maximal lifetime of the connection. And also we support Postgres starting from 9.6 version and Zabbix server starting from 4.4 just like an agent. And the possibility to monitor a few instances uh, at the same time. It's in the development stage, but hopefully it will become a part of the functions of the agent. And now we are collecting more than 50 metrics uh, in the near time. We plan to double this amount. Here are some of the metrics that are listed already. And we know that monitoring, uh, Postgres monitoring is done only by metrics. It's not really representative. So we need operational system OS metrics, but Go agent knows how to collect that. So to get a full picture, we um, we just get CPU memory from the OS and then as a template we add Postgres template and then we get the full monitoring. And just for an example uh, how to add new metrics, I will show you how does module work. For example, we want to get new values of uptime. We create the corresponding file and then we connect the library of working for Postgres, and then we specify a key. After that, we define a handler. The first one is uh, that will connect, and then you could add some parameters. These parameters could be used to form to create the query itself. Then we specify a variable 
for the result and the query itself. We run the query, we see if everything is all right, if everything is all right, then we get the result. Then we only need to register the matrix and to recompile the agent. That's it, now the matrix is part of the agent. Uh, our need plans is to add the Go agent for the Zabbix server 5.0 version. Uh, we plan to add new metrics and uh, to fine-tune the tests, some useful links for you, links to Mam and Sue. Uh, it's on the GitHub, so please go there. You can check how it works. Uh, the documentation, it was updated recently. Now it is a really uh, functional, really relevant, so it has a description of every function. It will help you to configure your monitoring. And then a link to the thread of the monitoring module at the Git. Hopefully soon it will uh, become a part of the master thread. We have also prepared a small demo. Uh, and uh, so it's a Zabbix server, Go agent is working there, it collects the OS matrix, Postgres matrix, you can go there, you can see how it works. Well, basically this is it, thank you for the attention. Okay, thank you Dasha, if you've got any questions you can ask, we still have some time. Hello. I've got the question, the following question. What is the advantage of the plugin we compare it to scripts? Because uh, it complicates things. Uh, because uh, in scripts, you can just change a config file, and here you need to write a code. Well, it's centralization of the storage. It's more convenient to monitor all the metrics and scripts. They're in one place, uh, there is all kinds of scripts. Either the the same limitation constraint in Zabbix that the server requests only one matrix per connection. If we talk about plugins and scripts, as I said in my report, so they are more efficient uh, from performance point of view. We can keep the constant connection, for example, to Postgres. We don't need to reopen it every time with every new query. That's first. And secondly, Zabbix. I don't know, starting from which version, uh, I think, starting from version 4, supports function, pre-processing functions, and you can now send a package, a batch of metrics to the server in JSON or any other format, and then... So that's not the trapper mechanism that has existed since long. But now uh, you can send the whole batch of metrics. Okay, I, I, I see. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for the report, for the presentation that inferred the question to you. You mentioned about the constant connection, what the effect uh, it gives uh, for the observer at the base. Without constant connection, yes, with constant connection with the workload. We haven't really tested, so you don't know yet. I can tell you for sure that it is more efficient than creating a new connection every time, especially if you re send queries a lot of times, one time per second or even more often, then uh, starting a TCP connection is a pretty, pretty difficult process. Now, Dari, I've got a question for you. In the first part of your presentation, did I understand that right, that the idea of the fast start, fast launch of uh, Mama and Sue was done? from the idea that Postgres and Zabbix are at the same server. That's why it's so fast. Now, Postgres and Zabbix, the idea is that you have already a Zabbix server. It has been installed already. It has been configured. Then, yes, the understanding is that what happened before you fast start moments and uh, Postgres is monitored where Zabbix is. We can monitor Postgres anywhere we want. So wherever Mamansu is installed, uh, there was a picture there. So Mamansu is installed at the server that we are monitoring, then it sends the data to the Zabbix server, so which is a different server. But we can also have the situation where everything is installed to the same server. Can you go back to the picture with the quick start? Uh, 
Yes, the Mama and Sue expert template, it comes from the Zabbix side. So we need to install Mama and Sue there and there. No, Mama and Sue knows. I mean, in the configuration file, you put in the Zabbix server address. So expert command will uh, send this template to that server. OK, I see. Thank you. And the second question regarding the second part, you said about 50 metrics that are being collected at the moment, and each metric must be compiled, uh, agent must be compiled, or there is an agent that compiled. No, you just compile it one time, then you install it, and then you run it, and that's it. In your example, it said that you take one matrix, then you include. No, that it was an example of adding new metric. If you would want to add a new metric, your custom metric, yes, yes, customized metric, of course. Otherwise, you don't need to restart the agent 50 times. OK, thank you. And on the other side, here I am. I've got a question for the first speaker. Uh, in the practice of using Dabix, uh, we had a problem that the custom and a custom item script uh, at a certain moment of time. This item starts to send a response really, really slow. You had the same example on one of your slides, and the timeout can be quite substantial. And we had really gaps, holes in our monitoring. The monitoring will really crushed because of this slow timeout. In the context of the plugin, I guess there is the solution. Probably you used some additional ways to resolve this problem. In the context of plugins, I can also work slowly, or it can sack fold, or it can uh, eat up a lot of memory. Is there any protection from this kind of uh, things? Well, anything can suck forward and crash any program, yes. But I'm just wondering about the lagging, because there is a certain deadline for the timeout, like 30 seconds, and it's not doing this. It's not fulfilling this condition. Are we going to lose all the metrics at a certain, at certain moment, or there is some fencing, some protection? It depends on a plugin that we are talking about. I've got the question about if one plugin is behaving badly, we are going to lose metrics of this particular plugin, or we are going to lose everything. Now, in new agent, architecture is slightly different. So it is uh, done in a better way. So if one plugin, by whatever reason, uh, glitches or crashes, then everything else will go on working. Thank you. I've got a question in here. Oh, I've got two questions. The first question is, is it possible to disable the system matrix collection? For example, we already have a template that collects all these metrics, and we don't need to double this uh, data. To disable what? To disable the collection of the system matrix in, at moment so yes. At moment so you can do that. And the second question. Do you plan maybe to modify Mamansu somehow, to change Mamansu somehow so that it could Promptail not export or your metrics because Zabbix understands a Prometheus node exporter and you can uh, make a monitoric under Prometheus, Prometheus to and then Zabbix to do it. Uh, Last frequently. Well, we didn't have plans like that. If you have any ideas, any offers, any suggestions, you can go to GitHub. You can uh, uh, create an issue with your ideas, with your suggestions. We will consider it, and maybe we will implement it. Thank you for the presentation, Vadim. I've got a question. I noticed that there is a context provider, this thing. Is it a wrapper above the standard context, and you can uh, uh, use it in plugins? Well, as for details of implementation of this context, I won't give you an answer. It's a question for the developers of the Zabbix agent. The context, as I understand it, was introduced to monitor the log files. OK, I see, I see. And I've got the request for Dari. I can see that you're using PGX library. The inbuilt support of the context. Contexts are great, so please use it more just to read the documentation and to use it. Thank you. Due to the switch 
uh, migration to go agent that got a question and Zabbix server will at centralized discovering to distribute the plugins to the remote machines. No, that's not the task for the monitoring system. There is a Pansible and other systems. What if Go Agent is already installed when the virtual machine is deployed and we want to deploy a SOP <laughs> and to start monitoring it and to send metrics there and you don't want to do this manually. I understand. I see what you're talking about. We had these discussions inside our company. But we decided, first of all, we are a monitoring system. And we don't want to compile functions like this. Especially since a lot of uh, security issues about that, and we that that what really bothers us. And I've got a question to Daria. Daria, question is, uh, regarding Maman Su. In Krasnoyarsk, you had a presentation and you talked about version 3.0, and at GitHub there is a 2.4.4. So, why does this uh, mysterious 3.0 version? Well, I can't really answer it. I don't remember talking about 3.0 version. Oh, but it's there in slides, not at these slides. Not 2.3, no, 3.0. Well, okay, then. Then the next question, Daria, you are the one responsible for the development of Maman Suet Postgres, partially, partially. Then I've got a request to those who are also responsible for it to pay attention to GitHub and there are issues that hasn't been replied to for more than a year. Just no one replied to those. Sometimes there is some uh, cosmetic things, facelift things, but uh, what we write there, no one is bothered, so it hurts a little, you know. You're saying all the time that you're supporting Mammon So and all that, but you're completely ignoring the issues at GitHub. That's not a good thing. So, okay, just uh, come to me, we will open a GitHub and you will show me what we don't respond to, what we don't reply to. Vadim, I've got a question, I'm here, that's me again. As the participant of the integration team, a member of the integration team, do you have a plan to integrate with console or TCD so that Zabbix server can store this configuration there and could get it without restart just to do reload and to connect to another database, another IP address or FQDN? At the moment, I don't know about uh, such plans. Maybe there are such plans, but uh, know nothing about those. Hello, thank you very much for your presentation. I've got a question. And Mom and Sue they had elements of an active agent that could change configuration. At the agent that is going to be at Go, do you plan to do something like that? Well, it has two modes uh, as a Zab Extrapper and as an agent, a standard agent. So, because server will take metrics from there, and the second mode is an active mode. It will give metrics, so it has two modes. A new agent as well, right? Yes. Do we have any more questions? If there are no, okay, okay. Well, first of all, while people were discussing the simplicity of the installation, it's a question to Daria. Maybe Maman Su should be rewritten to go so that you could use a binary to deploy it, and that's it. Well, this kind of task, I can give you an answer to your question. No, just just to think over it. We will put everything to go. And uh, I've got a question to Vadim. I was thinking about the prospects of using this uh, thing. And right away, I had an idea in plugins to collect metrics, allocating a special uh, routines for this collection. Wouldn't it break the timeline of the main uh, right to break what? Break timeline. Certain metrics are going to come later than they were than the previous from Q routine, a collection of one 
like a temperature. So one query worked fast and another query, so the server with temperature is lagging and we got a reply uh, of, from, from, from a later time. I can answer you from the top of my hand. Let's go to our stand. Yes, okay, we will talk about it offline. Can I ask a question? I just didn't see uh, in the new version of the agent Mam and Sue. You can write uh, plugins uh, in Python and put it into a folder, then you start the Mam and Sue, and then right away it will start to collect and to uh, send the matrix. If there is uh, such option in the new version. Yes, in my example, basically that what we had. So how to write your own customized matrix. So the same principle is applied here. We add a package, we uh, apply some uh, queries, and then there is the main file that is responsible for the Postgres module, and that's where we register a new matrix. And then you will need to recompile it. But the recompilation, so what did this action? Yes, it is a, a compilation. So when you didn't need a compilation back then, because it's a Python, you know. Okay, I see. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? I just wanted to clear out a thing. Do we need to recompile Mamansu or this uh, collector of metrics? We talked about Go Agent. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, Go Agent. You will need to recompile the whole thing, the whole Go Agent. At the moment, you need to recompile it. Maybe in the near future, we will use dynamic libraries. So you can put a new library into the folder. Still, you will need to recompile it uh, to any machine or at the same very machine. Yes, that's a question for the time being. We can't do it now, but we are working on it. So you will need to put Go there and to compile it there. No, you don't have to. That's a matter of compatibility in different versions of Linux. So you can compile binaries somewhere else. If at the same platform, then it would work at the neighboring computer. And at which OS you can compile a Go agent? Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Thank you. Do we have more questions or no more questions? So let's go drink some coffee. And one quick question. Why did you decide uh, to go from Python to Go? What's the advantage? Because uh, I don't really know Go well. I know Python relatively well, so it is more complex, I think. I will just explain why I'm asking that. Just uh, as a usual, as a common DBA, regular DBA, needs to write a selector that will collect something from the database and to learn Go for that. So it seems too complicated, too difficult if there is no separate Zabbix administrator and just to have a Zabbix administrator just for the sake of it. So it's not really a simple thing to rewrite, even if there is a Zabbix administrator to rewrite a new agent to put it all there. Why did you choose Go instead of Python? Is it a question for a Bamansu or for the agent? That's a question of if we are switching from migrating from Bamansu, because the way I understand it, you started making the second version and not for nothing, or you're going to support both of them. Yes, we support them in parallel for the time being. And what about then? I can tell you about uh, then on the future. Why did you decide to make it in parallels? What What's wrong about Mamansu, about the, its current version? Well, Zabbix is offering uh, new products and they're moving forward and we want to, we want to go with them. Okay, thank you. I think it is going to be one more method to collect the data. No one is uh, giving up the old uh, ways. Well, I guess we are done with the questions. We had a lot of questions. Thank you guys for your presentation. It was a great presentation, a lot of questions.